Hi, my name is Bob Marzano. I'm actually speaking from Denver, Colorado. Um, the, uh, 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 myself and colleagues Jennifer Norford, Danette Parsley, and Doug Gagnon have submitted a paper for the conference, and the topic of that paper is uh, a new paradigm for the teacher as a researcher. That's a very broad topic, but we actually take a very narrow focus. Um, uh, and that focus is uh, teachers um, conducting research on specific instructional strategies, and that 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 that's it. Just this is that, uh, and by instructional strategy, we mean things like uh, strategies for previewing, uh, bef uh, previewing content before students um, um, interact with that content, or strategies for graphic representations, how they're used, uh, strategies f for increasing response rates of students in class. Uh, so the focus on specific strategies and their effects on uh, students, student outcomes, uh, you know, most importantly, uh, student achievement. Now we assert that when you take that focus, the traditional paradigm for research in K-12 education, it just doesn't fit that well. And then uh, in the paper we try to lay that out. Uh, here's some reasons why we think that the traditional paradigm uh, just doesn't work very well. Uh, uh, and we provide, try to provide an alternate paradigm. Well, first of all, the traditional paradigm would uh, usually employs end of year assessments or interim assessments of student achievement. Uh, and with um, uh, uh, instructional strategies, uh, that doesn't work well because instructional strategies have a short cycle effect. And by that we mean that gee, if you have a, a previewing activity that a teacher is uh, um, studying, uh, that should have an effect within a single class period or within a couple of class periods. Um, uh, so the short cycle effect implies that, well, wait a minute, we can't use, you know, maybe the um, assessments that we use for large, uh, for within a traditional paradigm just don't, uh, don't fit very well. Traditional paradigm um, uh, uh, also focuses on uh, the generalizability, you know, of whatever interventions you're looking at. And the generalizability is usually uh, um, aimed at generalizing across large uh, um, populations as in all high school teachers or all fifth grade teachers. Um, well, the problem obviously with uh, when you're focusing on specific instructional strategies is that uh, the effects of those strategies are embedded in or situated in an individual teacher's personality, the content they're addressing, the characteristics of their, their students, and all the mediating and moderating variables that go with that. So generalizability within this model you know, uh, is very different uh, from uh, a model, the, the, the traditional model. Generalizability within this model means what's generalizable to that individual teacher and their content and their students in terms of um, uh, the effectiveness of specific strategies. Um, uh, traditional paradigm uh, generally focuses on uh, uh, multi-level type analyses, a hierarchical linear modeling most specifically. Um, and that, again, doesn't fit, you know, with our focus because uh, uh, if you think of teachers conducting experiments on specific instructional strategies, there's just no naturally occurring second level variables with the uh, first level being um, uh, the teacher the, uh, themselves and the specific strategies that they're, they're working on. Uh, you know, for example, you just, uh, you would never be very difficult to find a situation where, uh, uh, you know, all teachers in a school were working on the same strategy in the same content area and for the same length uh, of time. Uh, so it just doesn't work very well. Uh, also, in the multi-level models, depending on who you read on the topic, you know, they will define small group size as 20 or 30 or 40, 50 or 50 subjects. And you're just, you're not going to find 20 teachers in one building who are working on the same strategy, content area, et cetera, et cetera. So it just, it does not, it does not work uh, very well at all. So in effect, what we're proposing uh, is um, uh, a paradigm that allows teachers to be involved in what I'll loosely refer to as quasi-experimental studies you know, on specific instructional strategies. And then also, uh, we propose a way of how would you put uh, many, many studies, if we can have a national emphasis on this together, and aggregate the data in ways that are meaningful and as valid as possible.